I am a dreamer. If you if you dissect my life, I am made of very very small 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 pieces of big dreams. The first story I want to take you through is in 1990s when I was a teenager. When I used to go to school, some of my classmates are here. But my actual learning was at home. My father, who was an independent, I feel he was way ahead of his time because he failed as an entrepreneur. And he failed a lot of times. And what I was doing was, was observing him, following him, and I learned a lot of things from him. What to do, a couple of things, but what not to do, so many. The story is about that small boy, if you can see right in front of me, there's a, there's a photograph of 1990s when I was selling cold drinks on the street. That small boy, Farsua, in front of me, my brightest salesperson, he was deaf, he was dumb. I could express brilliantly. His eyes, sharp, shining. His smile, amazing. The way he would woo the customers was beautiful. I mean, he would bring in a lot of customers. It was very difficult to sell a non-branded fruit juice made by my mother. Nobody believed in it. And no great packaging. But that's what we do. But he was the one who would carry and bring in a lot of customers onto the counter. He had this mobile counter. If you see, I have faded it because that was not important for the story. Important was, he was my first guru, my first North Star. At the age of 19, when I was not sure about myself, when I was affected by shame, by fear, by the thought of lack of resources, what he taught me was life is not simple. Life throws a lot of challenges onto you. But important is you build your resources, you work upon them, you grow on them, and then take it forward. But keep smiling, keep working hard. He was the first guru who taught me that it's important to live this life with a set of dreams. <laughs> Come 2007. So through this process, what I learned was, of course, being poor is not an excuse. You have to develop your own resources. And if you get professional qualification, that's your biggest resource to start with. And the organization grew with it. And come 2007, I landed in Africa, driving the organizational growth. Actually, I started my journey in Africa in 2005, but this story is about 2007. Our, our residential colony was attacked by militants, hundreds of them. 45 minutes of gunfire, AK-47 rifles, grenades, RPGs. Those 45 minutes, 9, 2.30 a.m. We were on the first time in life. I was not sure whether I'll be alive. Will I come out alive? I was praying to God that God, please, if you can save me this night, tomorrow morning, the first flight, I catch, I go back to India. I don't want to stay here anymore. This is enough. This is it. This all took 45 minutes till the army arrived, the police force arrived, and, and, and the militants left the place. And then we came out, almost like 4 o'clock, when everything went quiet, we said, okay, things are gone, so we came out. We thanked ourselves that we are saved. Then we did a roll call and found that 12 of our people have been abducted. The militants took them away, including then CEO and other things, other people. That was tough. We were in shock. I called my boss, who was in Far East then, and just told me, um, you are in charge, do whatever you want to do. I said, I want to go. He said, no, you are in charge, do whatever you want to do. I stayed back. He sent all people out. 
establish the contacts with the militants. There is a process. I don't want to go into that detail, but it took us 21 days of negotiation to bring these people out of the Greeks, to got them free. Folded my hands and said, now I'm going to go. Left Africa, came back to India. Third day, I received a phone call from one Mr. Dave, who was part of the person who was abducted. He called me and he said, Manish, when are we going back? I said, I don't want to go back. I'm done. So then he told, no, Manish, if you don't go back, they win. We can't let this ideology to win. We have assets there. We have a program there. We can't go back. <laughs> Mr. Dave was my hero then, my monster. Next day, I was back in Africa. You know what happened then in the course of 10 years as a CEO there? This happens. An investment of more than $3.5 billion, building Africa's largest petrochemical hub, employment opportunities to more than thousands of people, directly and indirectly more than 100,000 people. Profits ranging more than $750 million. And a huge investment drive on the biggest petrochemical company to come up in recent years. We did it. Of course, we need a team. Nobody can do it alone. Nobody. You need a team in life, wherever you are. You need team. Develop team. Team of friends. Team of guides. Team of North Stars. Every phase of life, you'll find that torch beer, that mushroom, will, will carry you through that place and show you the path. And they don't look like superheroes. They are simple people living around us. One sentence will spark you and you catch it and they become your guru and then you move. And that's how dreams can drive you. That's how the things can drive you. So the third story talks about what next? And it takes you back when I was 39, 14. Let me take another box of making a movie. How do you do that? Because I have no connection in the film industry. So I used to follow uh, some of my filmmakers whom I used to respect and love on Twitter. So one day, Rajat Kapoor tweets that forget I don't want to make films because nobody wants to, and nobody understands these films. I want to go back to theater. I read that tweet. I, I was there on the Twitter that point of time. I read the tweet. And I said, sir, if you don't mind, I can produce your film. That's what I responded. He followed me. He, he direct messaged me saying, who are you? Where are you from? And they don't want to listen to the story. So I said, look, I'm Manish, I'm working in Africa. He said, look, hello, I don't want to talk to you. <laughs> I said, no, no, let's talk. Uh, I want to make this film. What's the budget of the film? That was my question, sorry. I didn't ask the story, I said, what's the budget of the film? And he said, almost like four crores. I said, I can do it. That was, that was the budget which I had in mind. If I get something focused, I'll do it. He said, but you have to listen to the story I sent me. I'll read it. Sent me the story. I read it. I love the film, the story. And then we said, OK, let's go ahead and make it. He said, but I don't trust you. You're sitting somewhere in Africa. I said, go ahead and make it. So I flew down to Bombay. We met. We signed. I said, OK, let's go ahead. He said, fine, let's go ahead. I, I handed him over some small amount. Two, three days back, then he again called me and said, look, Manish, uh, okay, you signed, you've given me some amount, but I can't sleep. I said, what happened? I said, I can't sleep because I don't know, you made this vanish. I will set up the team, everything is placed, and I don't find you. I said, okay, how much amount will make you sleep better? <laughs> he said, at least 60% of the amount. I transferred it next day. He said, I'm sleeping better now. That's how we started Akhodeki. <laughs> so Akhodeki came. Everybody clapped, everybody loved. People started looking at me, who is this guy who's entered? They said, there's a brave cinema, well done, and all those things. I was happy, I was receiving accolades. 
But then it bombed. It like I lost eight crores. The total amount of money I lost on Akhudeki was eight crores. Four crores in making and four crores in PNA. My net collection was 27 lakhs. I don't know. I even saw the check ever. But everybody was clapping. We got some three film fair awards and whatever. I failed. I failed miserably. But nobody was aware. I failed. Everybody thought I was successful. The point I want to drive onto this is that we need to have guts to fail because failures teach us that you have dreamed well, but something is wrong somewhere. Work on the dream. What I learned was I never understood what was filmmaking, and then I never understood how to exhibit the film. So we were just experiment, experimenting the things, and that's why things went wrong. It was a beautiful movie, but we couldn't spend it. We couldn't take it to the audience. We couldn't spread the word. We went wrong. We failed. And that's where we did a structured mechanism. We set up Christian films and started making films in a very structured way. And you know how it looks when you fail and you fail and you fail but you keep trying and you keep trying and one day when you look back how does the scenario look like? Like this. <laughs> These are the films we made. That's how failures do. You need to have guts. Guts to accept the failure. Don't cry in front of the world. Nobody knows your failure. Nobody cares. It's important that you sit back, read through, work upon, and learn and redeploy your resources, redeploy your dreams and convert. It looks beautiful. Almost four national awards, one Oscar nomination. We have covered through all the international film festivals. We have won in almost all the national, in, in big international films. We eat Masan, we eat uh, Karbi Hawa, we eat Amrika, Dhanak. A beautiful bouquet of films, right, in five years. You know how we did it? Because we had a beautiful set of team. You remember I said in the beginning? Team. Team is what makes you strong. You can't do it alone. It can happen. It never happens. You need to create a team, like-minded people, join together. Give them the same dreams and they should dream the same way you want to dream. And then what you deliver is this beautiful collage. And we haven't put the next four films which are coming. What I want to say is, the picture is beautiful when you look back and join the dots. The amount of satisfaction what you will get is amazing. And that's what I want everybody to drive through. This is my fourth story. This is somewhere April 2019, this year. You see a cheetah? There's a, a vast plain savannas of Africa. Plains, not savannas, plains of Africa. Of course, savannah, uh, plains of Africa and specifically Masai Mara. One of, the, one of the hobbies which I picked up was wildlife photography. So it was the last day of our trip very scorching heat, summer, winds blowing. And then what they do is you can see the barren field, burnt grasses. They set the grass on fire to prepare the grass. You know, it's a form of self-maneuvering. When the rains come, the grasses will grow. And then when the migration happens, uh, the wither base and all get the food. And that, that, that's how the nat nature's food chain works. And these big cats get the rain. So it was very scorching heat and we have an open jeep where you do the photography with big lenses. So we're crossing, we were pursuing this cheetah for almost two hours with an idea that we'll, we will see a kill. Because when cheetah moves, certainly there's going to be some kill. And we wanted to have that amazing pose, a photograph 
I would be all happy with to see Chita killing somebody. We followed a track in these burning fields among smoke, smoke, ashes, wind. It was very dry. I was fully acidic. Uh, and acid reflux happening, I could see it. But it didn't work. It just walked, walked and walked without any kill. I suffocated. I couldn't breathe. I slumped. I could see myself dying. I thought it was a heart attack. I fell down on the ground. I couldn't breathe. And I, I could only see, I could only tell to uh, one of my Maasai guide, was pump me, pump me on the chest. And I thought, I'm going to die. That point of time, I felt the world is coming to an end. My story is over. I never wanted that story to be over like this. I said, no, God, I can't die like this. This is not, I want to die. It's a heart attack. But, but then I want to survive. I, I want some chance. I, I want some more days. I want some more years. A lot of things I want to do. I have so much to say, so much to talk. People haven't heard me. I can't die like but I, I get passed off. I remember. And I could see myself. I could see myself lying. My legs not responding. My hands not responding. My kids were there and they were crying in front of me. I could see them. I could see them crying and see myself dying. But I was talking to my spirit. I said, God, I can't die. I can't die. I, can't. I have to come back. I have to come. And I can't die this death. This death. I was airlifted, I was saved, and my love. If those Maasai tribes would have bumped me in Eastern Africa, and the shed, the tree where I was looking for the cheetah kill, I would have died there. The story finishes. Life gives you chances to rethink, rework, reassure, rewind. Revitalize, refurbish, resurrect. Go live life, go dream. Wo kal jis naye savere ki baat ki thi, aaj aaya hai. Wo kal jis naye savere ki baat ki thi, wo aaj aaya hai. Utho tum, kadam aake rakho tum. Utho tum, kadam aake rakho tum. Kal ka jo tumhe bhrosa tha na, wo kal aaj aaya hai. Ab chalo tum. क्योंकि तुम चलोगे तो कई और चलेंगे तुम उठोगे तो कई और उठेंगे तुम बदलोगे तो कई और बदलेंगे चलो जियो तुम आज को